What is up guys, it's Steady Chaos. In tonight's video, I wanna talk about the LG C2's black frame insertion capability, and I wanna compare it directly to the LG C1's black frame insertion capability. Now, I know the giant elephant in the room is that the LG C2 does not have 120 hertz black frame insertion capability. There's been no word from LG as to why they've removed 120 hertz BFI on their entire line of 2022 LG OLEDs. But suffice to say, the LG C2 still does 60 hertz BFI. And for the majority of console players, that is enough as the PS5, the Xbox Series X, far and away most of their games are gonna be at 60 hertz. So just how does the LG C2's 60 hertz BFI work? Does it help to improve motion resolution with fast moving video games? Uh, just how much does it remove that persistence blur that LG OLEDs are subject to because they have that super fast pixel response time? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use benchmark discs like Spears and Munsell to try to properly gauge the motion resolution of both the C2 and C1 at 60 hertz. And then we'll move on to blur busters and look at some of their side scrolling tests to see if we can notice any difference in terms of motion resolution between the two sets and also in terms of brightness. And then we will go on to some real world content on the PlayStation 5, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, and also The Last of Us Part Two with black frame insertion on on both sets and also off on both sets. And we're gonna look at perceived motion resolution and we're also going to gauge with my X1 color meter just how much HDR brightness drops when you engage black frame insertion on both sets. Is highlight detail and sort of specular impact, is it preserved better on the LG C2 or better on the LG C1? Stick around to find out. First, we'll start out by measuring each TV's motion resolution using the Spears and Munsell calibration disc. Now with this test, what you'll see is some side-scrolling black and white vertical lines that are tightly packed, and you can distinguish between them on this close-up. Now what happens is as they scroll across the screen at various levels, so the bottommost level is 432 lines of TV resolution, the next level is 540 TV lines of resolution, and it goes all the way up to 2160. The higher you go on this scale, the more motion resolution you have. Now, to my naked eye sitting directly in front of both of these TV screens, I'd say they come close to rendering 432 TV lines of resolution. There's a little bit of blurring here on the bottom most level at 432, so in reality, I'd say they come closer to 360 lines of motion resolution. But once you engage black frame insertion, things change and they change dramatically. Now the very first thing you'll notice once BFI is engaged is that both screens become dimmer, but I also notice sitting directly in front of the screens that motion resolution improved dramatically. And I could clearly distinguish between the black and white vertical lines at 720. So that means at 60 Hertz with BFI engaged on both the C1 and C2, you have similar motion resolution of about 720 lines. In reality, it's probably a little bit closer to 960 lines, but you can't say for sure because this scale only goes from 720 to 1080. Now we move on to blurbusters.com and we take a look at one of their side scrolling test patterns where you have an image of the game Dota running from right to left across both TV screens at 60 frames per second. And again, 60 FPS because the LG C2 does not have 120 hertz BFI. And to my naked eye, without any interpolation, without any BFI on right here, both sets look pretty much the same. There's a healthy amount of blurring in the image. Uh, there's just seems to be a lack of crispness here. And that's to be expected because you are scrolling content without black frame insertion engaged. However, once you engage black frame insertion, things again change, and they change in two ways. So the very first thing, per usual, that you notice is both screens dim, though I will say that the C1 on your left dims more than the C2 on your right. The C1 really does seem to suffer pretty badly from black crush when black frame insertion is engaged. But as far as perceived motion clarity, Again, 60 FPS, both sets uh, rendering this at 960 lines of motion resolution. 
and the clarity is greatly improved. Everything seems sharper, everything seems crisper, and again, it's probably hard to pick out over YouTube in a video here, but there really is a little other choice to demonstrate this. But rest assured, to my naked eye, other than the brightness differences here, the motion resolution seems to be performing the same on both sets. Now we move on to the side-scrolling Eiffel Tower test on Blurbusters.com. Again, running at 60 frames per second with 960 lines of motion resolution as the setting. And what you see here is both TVs in their native state, no BFI, no interpolation. And as suspected, to my naked eye sitting directly in front of the screen, there is plenty of blurring. The internal metal workings and sort of detail of the Eiffel Tower on both TVs, especially the top half of that line, there's plenty of blurring, there's plenty of persistence blur. The cars on the road down below the Eiffel Tower, there's plenty of blurring on both. So again, this is expected because without BFI, the TV has a native motion resolution of around 360 to around maybe 420. So considering this test is running at 960 lines of motion resolution, you would anticipate plenty of persistence blur. And that's what we get. So once you engage black frame insertion, things should change. Now keep in mind, it's going to be difficult for my camera to pick up on these changes and it's going to be difficult to really see them clearly over YouTube, but I still wanted to include this footage and of course give you my commentary as to what I'm seeing. And again, the very first thing, it's a common theme here, the LG C2 retains far more brightness. You can see in the trees behind the Eiffel Tower on the C1 that there's more crushing of that green tree detail, whereas there's more brightness and tree preservation sort of on the C2 on the right. But also to my naked eye, and again, I don't know how well this is gonna be picked up on the camera, but the internal metal workings of the Eiffel Tower has greatly improved on both sets with black frame insertion engaged. And also the cars on the streets down below the Eiffel Tower are also greatly improved on both TVs. I would say once again, Motion resolution at 60 frames per second for both of these TVs is about the same. So far in my testing, motion resolution performance between the two sets is pretty much the same. With BFI engaged at 60 hertz, you get anywhere from 720 to 960 lines of motion resolution from both TVs. But then I thought to myself, with HDR engaged, just how much does BFI reduce specular brightness? So I got my X1 coloring meter out. I found the brightest specular highlight I could in Call of Duty Modern Warfare on the PlayStation 5. And I took a reading pre-BFI and then a reading post-BFI. Let's take a look at the results. As you can see from this graph here, HDR impact is severely compromised by black frame insertion. Without BFI on, you get 739 nits on the C2 and 672 nits on the C1. That same specular highlight post BFI, meaning once BFI is on, it drops down to 365 nits on the C2 and 302 nits on the C1. So for all intents and purposes, both TVs have their HDR impact almost cut in half. So you have to ask yourself, is using BFI at 60 Hertz on either the C1 or C2 worth the improved motion resolution at the expense of HDR or not? That is up to you to decide. Having measured an intense specular highlight, I next wanted to measure overall screen brightness. So here you have a very, very bright image in The Last of Us Part Two on the PlayStation 5 running in HDR. So I got my color meter out once again and I put it right on the sunset and took a reading pre-BFI and then I engaged BFI and took a reading just like I did with the last test. And you can see here just by observing the two screens, you see on the left there seems to be a little bit more flicker on the LG C1 than on the LG C2. And also on the left, the LG C1 appears dimmer than the LG C2. Let's take a look at the results and see if that bears out. Taking a look at the results, without question, this full field bright HDR image in The Last of Us Part 2 has induced automatic brightness limiter on both LG OLEDs. 
The C2 comes in at 250 nits without BFI and the C1 241 nits without BFI. But look what happens to the C1 once we engage BFI. It drops down to 131 nits of brightness, almost losing once again half of its overall screen brightness. Whereas the C2 only drops from 250 to about 204 nits of brightness, maintaining a little bit more overall screen brightness. In the end, the BFI performance between the LG C2 and C1 is pretty much identical, at least as it relates to motion resolution. Both sets in all of my testing at 60 Hz are able to resolve on average between 720 and 960 lines of resolution. Both sets do a good job at minimizing persistence blur with fast moving content. But if you find that you need a screen with 120 Hz BFI, you simply have no choice but to get the LG C1. However, if you are a console gamer, this shouldn't be an issue as most games run at 60 Hz anyway. And another added bonus for the LG C2 over the C1 when using BFI is the fact that the C2 has Evo technology. It has a higher baseline of both specular brightness and full field screen brightness. So when you do engage BFI on both sets, you'll find that there is just less dimming on the LG C2. Overall, it presents a brighter image still in HDR with BFI engaged. And then you add in the fact that the LG C2 and the G2 for that matter have better near black gamma tracking. They have better overall shadow detail in those darker areas and that's evident here in this side by side comparison. So you get more visibility with the C2 when using BFI. So in the end, that's gonna complete this particular BFI comparison. If you've enjoyed it or found it helpful in any way, please leave a like. It really helps me out a lot and please subscribe to the channel if you can. And until next time guys, I'll see you later.